this time every couple of weeks we catch up with our Professor of Education from the University of Newcastle. His name is John Vachetti. He always dresses like he's uh, looking to you know, step out on uh, the town straight out of a men's fashion magazine next to a bloke with a black okay. T-shirt. Mate, I'll have to do something about that. Good morning. That's okay, Mark. You know I have the face for radio, so it's all fine. Oh, no, a very very stylish-looking man, GQ or Vogue. Um, John, today you want to take a look at, uh, obviously, an event that, to be honest, without the sensational uh, uh, event that happened in the Oscars, no one was watching it. But anyway, up until then, um, you want to look at how that can impact, or there are some interesting parallels to the world of education. So uh, take it away in, in terms of, firstly, one of the movies that won the award. Yeah, Mark, the movie that won Best Picture this year came out of nowhere in many respects, called CODA, Children of Deaf Adults is the acronym. And it's on the streaming service, Apple TV+. And it's the first movie to win Best Picture at the Oscars that never was released in a big box cinema. Most all the others that have been produced recently by the Netflix and the Amazons of the world were released for a moment or two, just temporarily. Mm. Even during the pandemic, they snuck them into a theater in L.A. for a moment so they could get the critics' reviews and claim they had been displayed. This breaks down that barrier, meaning that a movie that has never been actually at the cinema won Best Picture. Kind of revolutionary, isn't it? Well, well it is. And for a lot of folks, that they, they don't go to the movies anymore. They, they've, they've got a zillion choices. So they right. go, well, this streaming network, that one, that you'll find something that you like. And we know in, in uh, the last decade or so, there are some actors that have exclusive contracts. Adam Sandler, for one, his movie's being straight to Netflix. And at a time, that was considered, oh, that, you know, you can't get a, a movie to house to what you're filming. But really, it's it's where the people are at. So let's translate that across to education. You look at, say, universities, and our radio station is, is nestled in the middle of one. Where is the parallel there with some of the big, large lecture, lecture halls, the theatres, the large gathering spaces. Are we about to see a shift in those, John? Well, that's where I'm going with this. So Mm. why do we really need the big theatres if the best picture can be one staying at home and watching it on your smart TV? And I think for universities that have over-invested in big box, just like the malls may have invested in big box stores when we're buying things online, they really have to be repurposed. Either they have to be performance events where big concerts and showcases and presentations and demonstrations can be made, Or do they need to be really immersive technology centers where you go and you get involved? Because if they're just going to be sitting in a row to listen to John give his lecture, you can do that at home. You can Mm -hmm. win the best picture, never actually having been to the the big box. So I think universities are going to have to redo not only the seating arrangement, but what they're intended to do. Just as the cinemas have had to make the sound better and the experience better, and a lot of them are bigger fancier, even now there's 4D coming, which is going to blow air at us or shake the chairs. It's going to have to be a real immersive experience. Or why would you go? So universities have to get into the pedagogy of making the experience of going to the campus worth the effort, because you can stay home and win an Academy Award. Uh, I can solve the cinema problems, make the food a realistic (laughs) price. (laughs) That's a whole other discussion. But then you look at some of the universities that are the massive just real estate hubs. I mean, there's all of these buildings sitting around, most unused. So is there a potential a lot of places could get caught out, you know, continuing to fund upkeep for buildings then there's just not the return on? Exactly. Might have too much space and they can be repurposed for, again, more technology-based and more intensive collaborative spaces, more places to perform and exhibit and demonstrate rather than to Mm. sit and to listen. In addition to that, flexible working environments of people will allow some of the staff to be home more, which will mean not everybody needs a desk or an office. And that'll mean more space that can be student-driven, student-led, and much more experience-based. That's pretty good, but I don't think we'll need many more new buildings. It Mm. might just be repurposing the ones we have to be more uh, collaborative, more immersive, more more people-centered. Continuing your tie-in with with the Oscar um, from the other day, John, we know that when the incidents happen, they get beamed around the world. Um, Yeah, sure, the TV networks pick up on it and becomes part of their, their news, but every one of us gets that information on your phone, on your computer, on your desktop within seconds that something has happened. So social media really taking off there. Um, what's the implications for the education world in terms of how social media really have become um, the way that things are done and also those 
sensational events become more newsworthy than actual real news that actually impacts yeah, us. Exactly. Well, 92, 94% of us have smartphones. Mm. And with the access to the devices gives the opportunity for social media to feed us the news. Our number one news force, news source is actually the social media side of your preference, which means we're not actually reading for depth. We're not actually reading things we don't know anything about. We're reading the things that interest us. That's both attractive to those social media sources and the ads that feed them, but it's actually a little risky. So in schools today, more young people know that Will Smith slapped Chris Rock than would know who the treasurer was that gave the budget speech mm -hmm. last night. And we could say that's fine, whoever knows that stuff. But extrapolate that to other things. We're getting information that's almost useless, fed to us all the time, replacing the cognitive space we have for the important stuff. And But we can't whinge about that. What are we going to do about it? This is a generation that watches first, just see the advent of TikTok and what it represents, Instagram replacing Facebook because it's much more picture and video based. Those mean we have to change our assumptions that this group of young people watches to read. They don't read and then, like I did in school mm -hmm. sometimes, watch. That's a flip of pedagogy we haven't embraced. And I think until we do that, those kind of events will continue to take over our minds and not give us the chance to actually be good thinkers anymore. I say bring back MySpace. It was the best of them all. <laughs> it really was. Um, yeah, an interesting way to look at things, John, because uh, it, it's all changing. And a lot of times we always seem to be, the, you know, the institutions always seem to be trying to play catch up. And it's a matter of trying to catch up literally as fast as the environment right. around us is changing. And right. that's an ongoing discussion, but it's an ongoing battle. It's it's like trying to, you know, get the, uh, the, the leaky boat with the bucket and get the water out all the time. Time. And this Oscars event showed me that it was all talking about kindness and love. And in the end, a violent act is what we'll remember it by. The notion of teaching kindness is not intuitive for us as humans. We're pretty much, I want that, give it to me, Mark, or you beat me up if I try. Uh, we, we've got a lot of angry people on planet Earth right now for a variety of reasons. Some of them legit, some of them not. If two Hollywood superstars can't get over their own selves. I think we've got an issue where we're going to have to teach each other that kindness that was represented by most of the other comedians that night. We're going to have to teach our kids and demonstrate it and try not be as angry. My message out to families is let's watch ourselves getting so short and rude and sarcastic and flippant to one another. Chris Rock made an inappropriate joke, but that action that was taken was more inappropriate. How do we stop that from happening? What if we listened to one of each other? What if we respected from one, one another? And what if we learned how to disagree? For our democracy to survive, we're going to have to learn how to disagree with one another because we're not supposed to agree. You and I have fundamental dis uh, disagreements on politics that we touch on sometimes, but I respect you and your opinion, and you teach me things every time we go into those conversations. That's a good thing for me as a learner, but it's also a good thing for us as a democracy. We shouldn't be just going slapping each other around. I still think that whole thing was a work, but even if the, even if that was, that is equally as just disturbing. Yeah, because totally. then, then they manipulated us to begin with. Well, then you've got a whole bunch of people that are putting on something and go, yeah, the, this is an act that is okay, which again is still not okay yep. if you follow where we're going. John, we covered a lot there, um, but I think we, we covered a lot of the fundamentals. As always, a good chat, mate. We'll catch up with you yep. next time around. Yeah, one before Easter. Have a good I week. I think. we get my weeks right, <laughs> surely. There is our Thanks, Professor Mark. of Education, uh, John Fischetti from the University of Newcastle. Or two in URFM 103.7. A broadcast service of the University of Newcastle.